Well, hello again. Uh, welcome to part three uh, of drawing the Springer Spaniel Puppy. Uh, I'm going to start doing the eyes shortly, um, but as I intimated in my last video, what I need to do is really decide on the background. Uh, I've debated a number of different things, like a nice blue sky, uh, but in fact, I think the star of this um, picture is in fact the puppy. Uh, so I've opted for uh, a nice dark background and one that complements the browns um, and, and that will sort of pull the dog out of the picture. So to do that, uh, I've got some soft pastels. Uh, I've got a blue, which I've used in quite a few, as you can see, uh, and I've got a nice dark green. Uh, I've also pulled out a black and brown just to add a little bit of depth uh, as I do it. Um, this part can get quite mucky, so you do need to be a little bit careful when you're doing this. Um, but what I'm going to do is very simply just run this across here like this. It can show up a number of creases. It doesn't really matter at this point. You don't want to press too hard because if you put too much pastel on the paper, you can't get the layers uh, and you can't get the effects you want later on. I'm going to come a little bit down here. Uh, I don't want to draw those paws. There's not enough detail in them to see what I'm doing uh, and to make them look right in the reference picture. So I'm not going to try and be clever with it. There we go. Need to turn this slightly. You've got to be real careful here because you just don't want to get the colours in all the wrong places. You can see I'm coming down close to the edges. I'm trying to hold this so it doesn't go everywhere. Same over here. Just trimming these edges across here because ultimately we want these these whites that we've got underneath. You can still see them, and they will come back through a little bit later on. Um, but we need this background to blur into the dog itself. And again, over here, just coming up from the pore where we're going to put that in the shadow afterwards. piece has got quite small now so it's a struggle to hold it properly. We can probably guess how I'll fill all this in afterwards but I won't be doing it just this second. And we'll put a little bit under there. And we'll probably do the foreground as well shortly. Uh, again exactly the same thing as I've just done but with the green. It looks very bright and very multicoloured at the moment. And trust me, by the time we finish this, it won't do. It'll just be an interesting effect. There we go. I have my son sat near me, playing on his Minecraft. He's a bit of a Minecraft guru. I think he's also trying to do some YouTube videos, but he's been quite quiet. Get right, so we've got this sort of nice effect now, um, <clears throat> but if we leave it like this, the dog's not really going to stand out, as you can probably tell. So, cardinal sin using black on a drawing. And again, this is not the one I really wanted to use. I've got one that's been broken in a little bit, but. We don't want it to be black because it's going to blend too much with the blacks of the, that's going to be in the dog afterwards. But when we blend this in nicely later, in a few moments, you'll see what this does to the background. And even when it's blended in, I probably still won't be finished with it. When you do this, just try not to leave these horrible edge streaks. They don't make for the prettiest look, fortunately. With the use of the right tools, you can minimise those streaks fairly well. Put in there. Again, 
again, we don't want to go too thick there because uh, we want to be able to draw on this afterwards. So I've got an old tortill on here with a mix of colours where you can see I've done this before. So I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm literally going to just push it all into the paper like this. Again, be very careful with your fingers uh, and don't be afraid to push into a little bit into the edges here just to create a little bit of a blur because obviously the fur is going to show through this afterwards. At least that's the theory. We hope it works. Do, do, do. Put a little bit too much on. So let's get the rest of this blur in. It works quite nicely if you do the whole of this in one direction. Not always that easy. But if you can, it creates a nice background image. too much um, pass on my hands because I don't want to get it all over my drawing and you've got to be very mindful of not letting the pass all over spill onto your your main drawing because if you don't get it off in the right way it'll leave dark patches or stains of colour where you really don't want them. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here and you'll see some areas where we'll need to add a bit more in later. But this is mainly so we can start having the fur in and because we want to add some colour into the eyes and to do that we need to know really what's surrounding the animal. The original picture appears to have been taken in a, in a room of some sort and the reflection in the animal's eyes is in fact uh, an individual sitting in a room uh, and having a camera on the floor in front of them. The camera's shaking, I haven't got this set up on a separate um, list unfortunately so bear with me on this one on a separate table and this is streaky remember i said avoid the streaks so we need to take those out afterwards uh, it might be an idea just to change the direction a bit to try and take those streaks out a bit and quite often i put this in um, a bit later than this because I want to get a feel for the colour but we've got a fairly good base colour on this drawing and this is quite a complementary shade to the browns what we're doing here is we're creating a background with some depth that isn't a, a pure flat colour um, It'll give a bit of an illusion of, of something in the background. It's not exactly trees, it's not exactly sky scenery. It can almost be anything you want it to be. Very similar look I always think to some of the old masters. My hands are gonna be filthy after this. So hopefully I've got some wipes somewhere. Yes, there they are. I always carry a pack of the baby wipes while I'm drawing. Because if you get muck on your hands and then you handle your, your artwork, it can be a mess, to say the least. Just on these edges here, I know I want that white to show through afterwards. Uh, I know it's going to be coming out. There'll be wisps of hair all over here. So there's two things I want to do, and that's to blend it well into the paper so that I can add more pasta later. And also, this is where you need to be a little bit careful. Um, on these edges, you don't want to make it look like it's been drawn around and largely it won't do when it's finished because we'll be messing around quite a lot with it between now and then. Um, but just messing around with the directions here. Just trying to stop it looking drawn around. Mm -hmm. And adding a bit of a blur just on these fur edges without going too far in because the fur is coming out from here not going into it you can just about see underneath where I'm putting this in here where some of the pastel streaks are coming through so we know where some of those wisps are still going to be which is good 
and a mucky drawer. That bit can't be denied. Now, you can see this has got a, a bit of a, a swirl going here, but they've got these horrible black streaks here, uh, and we don't want those. So I'm going to carefully just add some, a bit more over here. It doesn't matter too much. I just want to cover that up. I might use my fingers here. I don't want to push too much of this pastel off and re-reveal those streaks. Oh, let me have a guess. I may have to pause in a second if he's not going to go back to bed. No, you're not. So we've just blurred that out a bit. Oh yeah. Just a few motions here, bring some nice greens into that area. And you can see as you keep working this, you get a fairly smooth effect. too much about those edges because you're gonna have it in a frame I imagine. All right. As you can see my hands are filthy so I don't want to touch this main part of the drawing. But I do need to carry on. So I'm just gonna carefully turn it around. I don't want to tip it up at this point because I don't want to spill any loose pastel that's over here onto the drawing. Um, but I do want to be able to get to this part and effectively hide this drawn on part. Sometimes fingers are useful tools. Certainly when you've moved a bit of the pasta around anyway. Carefully pushing the pastel up here. And again, as you saw me do before, I'm going to blend this part afterwards. But before I do that, I want to draw some of that pouring. So that's a part for later on in the tutorial. Possibly another video altogether. There we go. Really sort of pushing this pastel in deep. It's a nice dark bluey green the whole thing. In a second I'm going to wash my hands off and then we'll start drawing in the eyes. Again these parts up here I'll leave them because later on in the drawing once I've got this area here drawn in I can spend a bit more time on the background adding a little bit more depth. Um, but it's giving me a good idea now as to what colours I'm going to use in the rest of the drawing to help create that depth. So there we are. And you can see the dog is already standing out and it will stand out far further shortly. Now, my hands are filthy, so bear with me. I'm just going to give them a good wipe over before we do any more. Oh. Good idea. Huggies baby wipes. Oh. Great for removing pastel off your fingers. Sounds silly. Wet, simple, and good for your skin. Well, good for your sensitive skin. So that's one hand done. Oops. Oh. Put 
put it everywhere on this one hand, so it's taking me a little bit longer than I would like. I'm sure there's some clever way of pausing a video, but I haven't worked it out yet, so I'm not going to try for that clever technique. One day, perhaps I will be technically superior with this kind of filming and be able to do these little slight pauses and you'll never notice. But this is the real world and this is a real time drawing. So you've got to be expecting it. <laughs> okay, so my hands are at least serviceably clean now. Uh, shouldn't get any more muck. Uh, on the drawing. Uh, so now it's going to pick it up and what you want to do is you want to tip it away from your drawing and you want to blow it off somewhere. You can see this powder here. I'm just going to turn it upside down. I'm taking it off the screen and I'm giving it a tap so that the loose pastel falls downwards. I'm carefully blowing it because if I spit on it it's going to leave little marks that are very difficult to remove later. Yes. Um, now, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, you can just see the wisps of hair under there. Part of me actually wishes I'd done a bit more because that's quite effective. So, quick sip of my lovely cup of coffee. And we'll carry on. Actually, I'm just gonna remove some of this um, pastel from the underlying desk here. <clears throat> Camera's gonna wobble for a second while I do this. And if I don't, it's still gonna go all over my hands. Yeah. I'll put those soft pastels away. There we are. Bit of a cleaner area to work in. Okay, hopefully this camera's gonna stop wobbling. I really need to find something else to mank this to. I've got a radiator there and that might be better to put it on there. So you've been knocking it and making you go seasick while you're watching me. Probably not very nice. Okay, so we've got that in now. We've got the background in, we can work the hair. We also know what colours, as a result of that background, we're going to put into the eyes. Um, eyes, as you probably already know, uh, reflect light from the surrounding scenery, and often the image that's in front of them. Um, so we want to make sure that that reflects, because that adds to the realism if it reflects the colours that you, you have around you. Uh, I'm just putting these soft pastels away so that I don't um, pick one up and accidentally smudge everything afterwards. It's always good to try and keep your area fairly clean and tidy, although if you're anything like me, you've got a table behind you where you're all spread out. Uh, all my colours are here. Uh, the colours we're going to think about here aren't in the same league as these browns. They're going to be greens and blues, very similar to what we've already put on the background. So let me just try and find out what colours I want to use here because obviously they're not the same as the as the pastels. So we've got some bluey greens. Uh, so I've got a, a couple of lovely colours here that will work well. Pit pastels are nice, but I don't like these containers because you can't get the done things out very easily. So that's a nice shade of blue and we might go for a similar sort of dark green colour. Let me get them out. Uh, and we might just get a lighter, a lighter shade of each one for some of the highlightable areas. I'll probably mess around with a few of these colours, so you'll bear with me, I hope. Sort of an aqua look with those. Okay, right. So, this eye we're essentially going to make up because it's going to be nothing like the reference photo. Um, I'll, I'll use the reference photo as the basic guide for it. I uh, want some nice dark colours. So we've got our black. We have our white, which is not dark, strangely enough. Um, but we're going to put the, the white highlights in first. So on this eye over here, let me just grab my special paper, which it looks like my lovely lady has removed from the desk. Probably thinking it's rubbish and I've left it out. Fortunately, I'm going to have some here. Good stuff to have around. Okay, I'm going to start with the the right hand eye. Uh, it might be useful actually if I try and zoom in for this. Let me just see if I can do it cleverly. There we go. 
I think you can see that fairly clearly. Hopefully the wobble will stop in a second. And I'll try to uh, keep myself still while we do it. So, just to get some colour in here. This is just a sort of a preliminary white to help us bring it back a bit later on. I don't know at the moment how this is going to pan out at the end. And then we'll move over to this eye as well and we'll do a very similar sort of thing here. Yeah. I want the light a little bit to, to, to sort of look like it's coming from above. Um, down there like that. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit too much in there because we are going to be playing with this a fair amount before the end of the drawing and um, we'll want to use a sharp pencil at that point too. Right, black. The evil black. So here we're going to really add in this sort of dark area under the eye. Do not be afraid. Being afraid is my job as the person doing the drawing. So adding this dark in, these dogs do have notoriously big dark eyes. want to try and aim for a fairly clean edge if we can. Again. Now, so we've got a bit of a shape there, a bit of coloration. I'm going to put a bit of black in. The eyes here. Uh, you can see I'm not pressing quite so hard in these central areas. A few spots perhaps, just to give a bit of an illusion of some depth. Right. I know what you're probably thinking. Oh, wait a minute, Rob. There's no pupil. Don't worry. We're not adding that yet. That's right. <laughs> but I will be. Very soon. I really want to make sure these pencils have got a little bit more depth in them. So put a bit more sharpness in them soon. Um, but I'm going to use a tortellum from yesterday that has a bit of the brown on it still. Uh, and I'm going to just push a bit of this black in. Just takes away that chalky effect. Take it nice and slow, there's no need to rush. There we go. Yeah. And we'll worry about blending here in a moment. I don't want to blend 
too much here because I've got some more work to do in the centre of these eyes. sharp enough eh? uh, I do have some more I bought <coughs> okay I'm trying this one for a second I don't think I've added any extra past this so I'm just going to sharpen up my black a second One of the hardest things about sharpening your pencils is just remembering which way to turn your sharpener. I'm not having much luck with this, I don't know if it needs um, a new blade on it. I'll get some graphite pencils in it shortly, uh, that will help sharpen it a little bit. Uh, coming here so I try and, add, try and add these little bits in <clears throat> as I do the eye because you can see that there's this lovely but very faint bit of line coming up that eye there that's very very difficult to see um, but as I said before it is there so you don't want to miss it off so there we have some nice coloration to the eye. Here though, this eye looks like it's doing the right thing. This eye looks a bit mental right this second. Um, but that's okay, because what we're going to do in a second is add a pupil in. Um, but before I do that, I want to add some of these colours we spoke about earlier on. There's going to be a myriad of these. Uh, and these are just to add bits of depth into the image. Again, just reflecting a little bit of what you can see in the background. And this will in turn help the um, the pupils show in a bit more detail. I've actually gone for those lighter colours I want in a short time. And I'll probably darken these up again before we finish. We'll see how it happens with the tortilla on. See what that does to it. And I have a nice little, very, very faint. blue rim probably around both of these here. This is just touching the white and going over the black. There we go. Now here I need some more to sort of be looking in that direction. Uh, you can see now where we've done this, how we need to add in the dark. So it looked like it was quite deep before. We've added some more depth into it, and now we need to do it all over again. And that's what we'll do. So, big pupils.
I don't want every part of this to be white, you see. And again. Just adding in some illusion. So I've not defined great big hugeness in these pupils. I'm not trying to actually draw in a pupil because on the real dog, you can't really see that part of it. I'm not sure if this dog is cross-eyed here. <laughs> That's okay. And then we're gonna go back to the uh, fourth one for a second. Put it on. Well, the final one I was using, I shall use that one, but it seems to have uh, sprouted legs. That's frustrating. Oh, it's over here. There we go. All right. So we have a few things going on here. Uh, first of all, is just to get some little blending going down. compared to others. Like I said, I'm just pulling the pastel into the eye. The colours that we've already used, just pulling them down over the white, just to enhance this effect. quite like the way that eye's gone. This eye, I don't seem to be able to get the right look onto it so far, uh, but I think I actually do know why. Because on, on, on this eye, there is the reflection of fur, which we're not showing at this precise moment in time. I think we need to bring in some more white here. And Let me just stand up and have a quick look at this here. That's working quite nicely, right? little bit sharper. I've lost the brightness a little bit and that's okay. What we tend to do when I'm doing this is not get too obsessed with perfection. I think if you try and get too obsessed with perfection then you you can lose what you're doing and that can be a shame. On that now I'm not going to try and do too much coloration uh, I do want to however add some hints of the brown because this dog is brown and he's got reflection that's going to be coming off the bottom of his uh, off his fur so there's going to be something there there's no uh, way of avoiding that but it's small amounts Like I said, not too obsessive. Hopefully that looks all right. 
it's certainly different effect. I hope it's clear on the video because it looks a bit blurry from here. I'll just double tap it and see if that helps. Oh, I'll double tap it and then knock it so that it makes it even worse. Uh, okay. Right. When we do the eyes, they look a bit funny like that, as you can probably tell. Um, so we need to add in some other colours. And on the original, we've got some sort of nice blues and purples and things like that. Because we've done the bluey purpley background, we want to carry on using those sort of colours, but there's no escaping that, you know, like any animal, they can have a bit of pink in the white of the eye. Um, so we've got to put a little bit of that in. And it's just a very, very small, it's a bright pink colour here. This is Faber Castle 124. We're just adding a little hint of veins in with that will be covered up slowly. We've already got the basic white undertone. Um, and we're going to add in, I think, some dark green. Uh, is that dark enough? I might put in some of this uh, dark blue colour as well. well. <laughs> you can see I'm really pressing um, quite lightly here. I'm confused. Just to get this <clears throat> By playing my own very pale hint level, of what might be in the background. Bit darker in these sort of corner areas here. And we put that sort of slight blue across there before as well, didn't we? Okay. <clears throat> then we're going to go back to the uh, tortillons. Uh, but I want a cleaner one than that one. So let's have a look okay so very much like we did before blending some of the color in not trying to obsess over perfection I'm sort of blurring all the details again eyeball so we need to make sure it looks a little bit rounded so to do that we get our white again I'm just going to carefully stroke in these central areas a little bit Ooh. not always easy to do this perfectly have this little bit of light going here so we want to carry that on down the eyeball a little bit going to go perfect with this mm. trial and error unfortunately the great thing about past on that is that you can keep working on it for a little while at least as we'll probably have to on this side some continuity between the two parts of the eye here. But 
we still want a bit of light coming down there. Just want to be brighter there. What I might do afterwards with a soft pastel is add some of these extra parts of some even brighter white onto the white we've already put on. I'm still not brilliantly happy with this. Sometimes you just have to play with it a little bit more. Uh, the puppy with squinty eyes. Oh, I'm sure puppies do have squinty eyes. I might have to stand back from this in a second and have a uh, another gander at it. Right then, where's my little black gun again? And again here, I'm going to just add a little bit there. Like that there. Now we have a puppy looking at us. He's looking at us here and he's sort of looking over there here. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh, so I've got two choices. I can make that eye look over there or I can make this eye look towards you. Uh, I think it would look nicer if the dog was looking in that direction. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pull this over here a little bit more. Easy to make these little changes. You've just got to be a little bit mindful as you do them. If this, uh, if the eyes on this dog were good enough on the reference picture, this wouldn't be an issue. <sighs> Actually, they are good enough on the reference picture. It's just that the reference picture doesn't have the right sort of background. I don't really want to draw somebody. I said there, so you see the eye direction has changed a bit now. Might add a bit different coloration in here in a second. Let me have a, a good look at this now. <clears throat> Doesn't matter if this isn't perfect at this point. need to see that there don't we <sighs> possibly just pull this in in fact where the shadow of this eye is what we're going to do I think because we've got quite a bit of work to do on that shadow yet that will help. Okay, get in there. Okay. So we have a Slightly better eye. And I say slightly, I'm not brilliantly enamoured with it at the moment. But hopefully. By the time we've added the rest of the detail in here, it will look like it's supposed to. You've got to keep the edge of your pencils clean when you're working black onto this. Uh, otherwise, it can really make an effect that you don't want. That's a bit better. And then we want to bring some of this sort of greeny blue hue back over here as well. It looks so nice. A 
and back to the tortillon, but we don't want to use the uh, that one we've already put the white on. I'm just going to tamp. I'm going to tamp this down a little bit rather than trying to draw with it. Gonna hold this up very quickly and see how it looks to me. Okay. Wonder do, wonder build. Uh, so what we've got here, we've got this lovely coloury shade in this side of the eye. We're missing that on this one. So we're gonna put that in. Or at least we're gonna try and put that in. And see how that just brings some continuity to the two eyes. Oh. We don't want this big jet black line that we've got down here either. So just by adding this little bit of colour in, but just taking away this sort of very stern edge. This goes to show that not you know it doesn't matter who, who it is that's drawing mistakes can happen you can draw things that you think are looking right uh, and of course they turn out not to be anything like you wanted them to be and that happens to all of us the key is not to not to give up because with any piece of art perseverance quite often wins there we go and this eye isn't perfectly round so I'm not worried about creating a weird edge there because it's kind of the effect that we want okay so we've got some nice basic eye shape there I will probably work on that a bit more later on um, once I know a bit more about the colours around it uh, but for the meantime we're going to start drawing in these very little corners uh, and I'm going to use I think again this sort of darky green colour along with my black uh, and possibly my my white so three colors to do this and we're going to need these to be fairly sharp again so I'm just going to sharpen up these pencils as best as this sharpener will allow if this doesn't work I've bought some graphite pencils today uh, and they are quite good for sharpening with especially when your sharpener doesn't appear to be doing anything let me have a look. Hmm. Maybe I need some charcoal right now. Uh, What's happening? Okay. The blue is probably okay. Do you know what? Could be the problem sometimes with sharpness. You think your uh, sharpness died, and in actual fact, there's a little bit of uh, of lead inside. Oh dear, right. I can't see any. I'm having a quick look inside the mechanism here to see if I could see anything caught in there, and I can't. So, really, it has no excuse. <sighs> dear me. Now, I'm covered in bits of pencil, pastel lead. Uh, when things don't go smoothly, it's always a bit of fun. Let's just give this another try. And quite a bit of powder in it, so it might just be. I think that's a bit better. No, we're still not getting a very fine point on there. Maybe time for a new sharpener. I've only had this a few weeks. 
worth bearing in mind. This is the Helix one, which I've heard a lot of people swear by. But I think I'm almost tempted to swear at it instead. It's almost like the setting is wrong, but it's not. I'm gonna do this one. a little bit better but I haven't really got that fine point so what do we do when we haven't got a fine point we create one I'm gonna show you what I do I've got some I don't know this is Rembrandt pastel paper uh, and I will literally twist and shade twist and shade and that gives me a much finer point it's not a perfect way of doing it but it gives me the point that I need for when I'm doing these bits this is also good to do when you're doing these fine hairs, because it leaves a bit of powder on the uh, on the nib, uh, which could help with the highlights. I have another type of sharpener somewhere here. I might have a go with that in a bit, just to show you the differences. Make sure I don't spread anything on there. Okay, so we have some nice fine colours in here. So uh, I'm going to go for a bit of pink on this as well. Again, uh, so what we're going to do, add this little bit of pink in. This isn't too, I don't want this to look pink in any way, shape or form. Um, although in natural fact, I'm going to add a little bit more pink into the eyeball. Because I think it needs it. best do the same on this one this is actually a little pinker there we go and that will fade out a little bit between now and when we finish the the drawing now let me show you what I'm gonna do this little puppy has this lovely gummy eye down here So just very lightly, and we're drawing the edge of the balls, the edge of the eyeballs. Let me rephrase that for people that are watching that might wonder what on earth I'm doing with this puppy. There we go. Don't laugh, Robbie, please. That wasn't intended to be funny. <laughs> does have some sort of strange light effect coming around. I'm leaving just this edge here for highlighting later. Okay. Pull this back just a fraction from about there. What I'm doing here is just little tiny, tiny marks all the way around there. Um, and that just helps set off a bit of a edge into the fur that's around the eye. Gentle undertones of Minecraft in the background. I won't be tagging Minecraft in the uh, description of the video course, which probably might like me to. And then I'm going to have some sort of slightly blue streaks. 
peaks in there like that. And then, do, 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 yeah, maybe the tortilla on again, I think, for the time being. And then we're gonna push this back up there like that. What I've done is create this sort of subtle look here. I hope it's subtle. I'm gonna refine the edges a little bit because there's some lovely detail to add into the this part of the eye. You can see how I've added some of the shadow there just by dragging again some of the pastel over. Uh, and I'll worry about this part here really after, but. I don't like bits that stand out and look a bit ugly while I'm drawing. As you may have noticed, now this here is a little bit too uniform. It almost looks like a, a robot or a metal look to it. And this is the beauty of being able to use this sort of medium. You can add these sort of extra colorations in fairly simply I need a little bit of white and we're just gonna we have this highlight coming down here and I'm gonna bring it up a little bit there we go um, I want to give it a slightly wet look to the eye. So I'll bring this down and we'll make it a little bit more random than it is. Mm -hmm. I think that could be enough just there. Now that's standing out far too much and I could use my tortillon for this but I think it's a little bit too delicate so I'm going to use this. This is the colour shaper. just to take that down a notch. Okay. We still want that to have a little bit of a fleck in it. Um, and as I said before, when you're drawing, keep drawing, don't stop. If it doesn't look right, well, that's good. Just means you've got more to do. More fun to draw. Mm -hmm. and to my mind, this should come up a lot further here. This so as you can see, that's what I'm doing. There we are. I've blown it onto the thing here, which isn't always the cleverest move, but it seems to be okay. I want to just resharpen the very edge of that white. Very, very quickly, in fact I'm not going to use the white, I'm going to use a pebble. And I've got a nice sharp one here, it's not sharpened normally but it's new out of the box. And I'm just going to put in, if I can, that little tiny edge there, you can just make it out. I said before about depth, helping to shape. These actually are quite soft um, shapers, not doing really what I wanted them to do, but they're okay. These are great for hair, by the way, which is why they're out. As I mentioned, I want to use them on this drawing. Uh, 
and they're good just for smoothing off some of these edges as long as we're careful oh, my head's not in the way there we go do, do, do. now then why am i wanting to do something else to this i'm going to just quickly sometimes it's helpful to just stand up and look back a minute uh, I don't know if this is going to be yeah, probably the wrong colour. Maybe I need uh, another purple, a different shade this time. So isn't so much like that. In fact, there might be a bit of brown in there. I'll pull that bit out a little bit more. There we go. And then I'll add some brown into this part afterwards. So we've roughly got the eyes in the right way now. Uh, again, if you're not sure, you can pick it up, move it back from you and have a look. And that's not entirely perfect, but it's not far off it compared to the way it was before where we had a, a nice looking but squinty eyed dog. I hope you'll be able to see this because I just realized, of course, I zoomed in on the camera. Um, but yeah, that looks quite effective from what I can tell. So I'm gonna zoom back out now, I think. Uh, no, I'm not. I've changed my mind. I'm good at that. Because you can see quite a lot of the detail in here that I'm going to be adding in. So, let's have a look. With the eyeballs in, we want to draw in just some of the surround here. Again, I've got a black here. Black is not my favourite colour for doing shadows. Uh, but the nice thing is now that we've got this background up here, we know we can add in some of these, these dark blues and it will look quite effective so what I'll do first is just start adding a little bit of blue into here and it is only going to be a small amount we want this to really shine through later it might look a bit odd but do not be afraid Actually, I'm just gonna probably don't really need to put these bits in yet, but we are going to anyway. Right? Give an idea for later on what we're gonna be doing. We're adding in some of the darks. Okay. Now this has this very, very subtle, really dark here. But it's got this sort of slight texture, so we don't want to colour it in. We don't want to put hairs here because it's not really hair but it's going into the hair. So we're going to keep it going in that direction just to help with the realism later. Okay. <laughs> so we've got to be careful. Remember I said, <coughs> excuse me, remember I said about making sure you check your reference colour, reference drawing quite regularly. And this is a good example as to why, because the hair changes direction. And you need to be able to show that fairly regularly. Uh, that's going to come down there. A couple of dark spots. I'm just very gently. Remember we left this line here uh, in one of the earlier tutorials and you get an idea why I brought that up because it just creates that lovely little little edge. Some people tend to just colour this all in all the way up to the eye uh, and it doesn't doesn't look right because it's not. 
simple reason really. Right. I think I mentioned this before, but no two hairs are the same length. So they want to just try to vary some of these. But don't get too much panicking about it and spacing it and doing those things. Because when we come back to add the highlighting, that's it, going to be part of it. It's bringing those those bits back. So we've got some lovely depth there now around that eye. Yeah, and I probably want to add a little dark streak along the bottom of the eyeball here because that is just a little bit too, um, what's the word? I don't know. I don't know what the word is. So I'm just shifting some colour along there. But again, I'm leaving a slight edge, a slight light edge there. There you are. I don't know how much I like that slight light edge, but it seems to work. And I'm going to soften a little bit of this. Sorted ones are great. Um, but for those fine sort of areas like that, they're not quite so great. Okay, uh, so we're going to carry on like this all the way around. I'm getting quite mucky here. Um, so before I start spreading everything everywhere, I'm going to cover this up again. All right, so where are we? Again here, this isn't hair, but it's important that we maintain that bit of an illusion. Because as we come up here, it's not perfectly black in this area, so we're not pressing too hard. And then the, the, the hairs are going to start somewhere over here, I guess. It's important to keep tearing your pencil in places as well. Um, to maintain a bit of a point. And then, very quickly, they start to turn. Sometimes it's good to just draw a couple in like this. You can see where you've got your, your directions going. And this actually is quite a bit darker here. There we go. Okay. And then all along this edge here, we're going to come in just a little bit. In fact, use this I'd like to use the, the torto one but I'm not going to I'm just gonna pull a get rid of this sort of um chalky look around the edge by pushing the past around it a bit more and I'm gonna need to sharpen this black doesn't take much to lose that fine point Especially the pencil shot is not working the way it should do. Future tutorials, I'll have two pencil sharpeners on standby perhaps, just in case. Okay. There we are.
go. I'm just leaving now this tiny bit of an edge around the edge of the eyeball. It's quite, it sounds silly. It doesn't, some people look at that and go, oh, he's missed a bit. Well, no, he hasn't, I can assure you. And then here, the shadow sort of really does blend with the eyeball. So don't be afraid to make sure that shows. Okay. Please do that. No. It's very easy to start thinking, oh, I'm going to put all these little streaks in here. Bits and bobs, and certainly we are going to do that afterwards. But if you do it when you're not supposed to, you put a, a line in the wrong way. And we need to add in these sort of slightly lighter hairs down here soon. Let's draw some of the depth down here. Again, we're casting some illusions. And we've got some nice dark here as well. And again, I talked to you down about getting carried away. That's what I do when I keep doing these extra little parts. So, as I asked you before, if you see me doing it, please yell. You see how we've just lined that little bit of an eyeball there. You can just make out the colour difference, but it's very, very subtle. And I think I want to do very similar here. Well, I brought some of that black back into the eye here. And we're doing the same over here. And again, this eye is going to operate in much the same way so I'm just going to spend a minute looking at this it's got this lovely black rim coming up here like this oops comes round and becomes a really fine line. You'll notice I turn my pencil quite regularly. And I know um, there's another artist called Colin Bradley, a good guy. I actually subscribed to his channel not so long back. Uh, and his website's very good if you haven't had a go on it. Uh, and he certainly talks about changing your, your pencil directions around. That's funny, I remember people think I was mad doing things like that. Like, use a sharpener. Uh, one thing I haven't done here is added my nice blue highlights. There we are. And that depth I want in here. Just in these shadows. Just adding this bit of blue in does make a difference, believe it or not. Be careful if you blow it like I'm doing there because that can um, have a rather detrimental effect. One tiny bit of water uh, and your whole piece of work is potentially ruined and trust me 
trying to put that back can be a bit of a nightmare. Again, I'm just putting these little lines in here. I'm doing it in the direction of the fur without trying to make this particular part look furry because this is just where the fur comes off and heads up into the into the eye and it gives you this nice little rim um, and these rims aren't a perfect circle so you can add in you can just change the, the subtlety in a couple of places add a little dark bit there we go I actually would like that to have come round a bit more up there so I might draw um, a small area there in a bit more uh, and in fact we have just here I think part of the eye going down there there we go <laughs> and then we need this again coming over here I'm going to have to add a bit more detail around there than I really wanted to at this point but we'll see how it goes these lines look a bit blurry Good, that's what we want. Because we're trying to create the illusion of hair. As I mentioned yesterday, trying to draw 10 million hairs on any kind of picture is a bit of a mission. And I don't recommend you try it. I saw an interesting technique on a, a side hood that I've never tried before, which is to use a glue stick, more on graphite, but I thought it could be interesting to try that on there, on pastel. So I might go and buy one of those and give it a go on a test and we'll have a look how that works. This is gonna come across a little bit more here. That blue is really staying there, isn't it? Not much look at the black on this at the moment, but there we go. So we've got this lovely effect here with the eyes, now. So tempting to just keep adding bits in and saying, oh, I need to do this, I need to change this, I need to do that. You're right, you do. But you don't actually have to do it all in one go. So this is where this can come in very, very handy. Um, but it involves being also very, very careful because you want to create, again, the illusion of hair and this helps pull some of the colors down. A bit like we did when we were smudging it before. So if you've gone a bit heavy, uh, it's quite a good way to blend the pastel down. And we'll do the same probably over here later. shake make everybody seasick okay now then again you've got to be real careful when you do this because you need to keep the direction going it doesn't work quite as well as tortilla uh, for this but it's nevertheless not a bad tool Good for working both ways. Well, in theory, I haven't got enough pastel up here at the moment because if you remember, we pushed it all in. So it's not going to blend that perfectly well yet. So I'll leave that little 
demonstration till later. Uh, what else do we want to do on these eyes? Anything or nothing for the time being. Do, do, do. No, I think nothing. Uh, I'm quite pleased with the way they look. Uh, stand back, have a quick look, and they look quite nice. By, but by the time we finish this painting, there'll be all sorts of little bits we want to add in. You know, we might look and say, well, hang on, you know, this doggy needs more veins in his eyes. You know, he needs a bit more, a bit more coloration because he's after all a dog. And dogs have things in their eyes. But I'm not going to worry too much about that because I'm quite keen to start on the next part, which is adding, as we've done here, but everywhere else. And that'll really start to bring the browns alive. Uh, and then we have the fun bit, which will be the white. Ooh. Right, so that's my eye tutorial done. Um, we've drawn in the basics around of each of the eyes. Uh, we've got a little bit more work to do down here and down here. But that's part of adding the depth and the detail into the fur, which will be on my next training video. So I hope you've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's great to read your comments. Uh, I hope my waffling hasn't been too much. And I hope you could see it clearly without the camera wobbling. Uh, I will look at changing the camera mount for the next video so that you can see it more clearly. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.